What is going on guys? Dubs here, back with another RuneScape quick guide. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Nightmare Boss and everything you'll need to be there. So, let's just jump right into it. Alright, let's go over the requirements to fight the Nightmare. In order to fight the Nightmare, technically the only requirement is to have access to Mortania. To gain access to Mortania, you must first complete the Priest and Peril quest. Alright, let's go over the equipment that you'll need to bring with you for fighting the Nightmare. For my equipment, I'll be bringing the Nati's Knot Face Guard, Amulet of Torture, Bandos Chestplate, and Bandos Tacits, Primordial Boots, Berserker Ring Imbued, Barrow's Gloves, Mythical Cape for the Crush Bonus, and a War Blessing, and I'll also be bringing an Abyssal Bludgeon. Nightmare is weak to crush damage, so you'll want to make sure that you're using a crush weapon during the encounter. I'll also be bringing along a Trident of the Swamp, Eldinus Ward, a God Cape Imbued, a Colt Necklace, and Tormented Bracelet. You'll need to have a Mage Swap with you during the fight in order to take out the Pillars during one of the phases. I'll show that later on in the video, though. If you can't afford any of these swaps or any of these Mage Gears or Melee Gears, all you really need to make sure that you have is a Trident with you, or I guess any, I guess an Ibans Blast could work with an Ibans Staff and stuff like that. But you don't need to bring a full Mage Gear swap. Because the only thing that matters is Magical Damage Bonus. Mage Gear won't add any damage bonus, only the Magical Damage Bonus will during this fight. So you don't need to bring all the other Mage Gear with you. A nice alternative to the Abyssal Bludgeon is the dual Makahuka Litis, or whatever these things are called, guys. I have no idea. Um, and if you also don't have the Bandos Chestplate and Bandos Tacits, you can swap over for the entire set of the Blood Moon gear that was released with Perilous Moons. It's actually great for fighting this boss. If you can't afford that either, you can also downgrade to a Zombie Axe and a Defender in your offhand. I'll try to post the prices of those in the video. Another good downgrade, if you can't afford those either, is just bringing a nice Darox plate body, Darox plate legs, or a dragon boots with you, and then still maintaining whatever best crushed weapon you can afford at the time. Alright, now let's talk about your inventory. For your inventory, as I stated, I'm going to be bringing all of my mage swap gear, as well as a divine super combat, and a sand serum for the parasite effect of the boss. It also as a bonus will restore prayer points when you need to drink it. I'm also going to bring two prayer pots and then fill my inventory with anglers. I'm also going to be bringing along Draken's Medallion, which will teleport me back to here, version Haza, at the bank, and then I can just run all the way back over to the north, back over to sleep. Which, if since we're ready, let's just do it now, or you can skip ahead in the video. See you guys there. Alright guys, we have made it here to the Nightmare, and they are currently in the middle of the fight right now. So, I'm going to wait till the fight is over, and then I'm going to join up on this group that's already in there and start killing the Nightmare with them. Hopefully it goes well. Alright, it's over. Let's go ahead and enter. Ooh, and Titus Z is already here waiting for me. Alright. So you're going to want to have the game chat on over here so you can see the effects that are going to happen. You'll have a pink text that will pop up during the boss fight that will say you've been infected by a parasite. You're going to want to be paying attention for that. Go ahead and eat my angler. Sip my divine super combat potion. Go ahead and turn on piety. 
and let's start beating the crap out of this guy. So that's the magic attack right there. You'll hear with the magic sound. The ticking is the ranged attack you want to put on the protect for missiles. Ticking again, protect for missiles. Ticking again, protect for missiles. Every time you hear it, just leave it on. That right there, he's spawning husks. It's one of his special effects. Boom, ranged attack, make sure you're praying magic. This is the hands, you're gonna wanna move away from the hands effect, and you don't wanna be standing under him either when that happens. Ranged attack, magic attack. Magic attack, here it is. Magic attack again. And he's gonna go to the middle, this is his special effect for this phase. You'll want to be standing in the quadrant of where the flowers are nice right here. You see this whole quadrant? This whole quadrant is safe over here. Back to hitting the boss. That's his melee attack right there. I'm not in melee range or else you'd want to have on protect from melee. So his health or his uh... what am I trying to say here? His energy bar is gone right there. His shield bar. So you can end up damaging these pillars because the shields are down. So you want to put on your mage gear and damage these pillars to end up dealing damage to his true health bar, finally. Melee attack out there. Titus Zet's killing the husks. Throw back on your melee gear and kill the sleepwalkers that will spawn at the pillars. There's a lot of them. because, And then he'll deal damage to people for every sleepwalker that gets through. That was a lot of sleepwalkers. We're going to get hit with a nice 25 damage there. Back onto melee gear and protect from range. There's a lot of splash damage that goes on in this fight. So that, he swaps your prayers around. Your protect from magic becomes protect from range. Your protect from melee becomes protect from magic. And your protect from range becomes protect from melee. I, that one's a lot. That one confuses people. That's where it'll get you. But you'll catch on to it pretty quick. It just swaps your prayers around in the combat triangle, basically. And then after several attacks, it'll go back to normal. So the parasites just went out. I did not get infected with a parasite, thank goodness. But if I did, I'd see a text down here, and I'd have to drink my sand fuse serum. Alright, so parasites are out from their hosts. So go ahead and kill the parasites immediately. Those should be a big priority. Dodge the hands again. Every time you see the hands, you gotta make sure you're dodging them. I'm gonna move away from his front side to make sure I'm not in range of his attack. He swapped prayers again. So your prayers are going to be swapped around. My melee is protect from magic. My magic is going to be protect from missiles. There it is, magic attack. That was a bad prayer flop, but you know, that's how it goes sometimes. His health bar is almost down right there. Boom, we can start maging again. So I'm going to get on my mage gear and start maging him down. All these totems out here. Watch out for the hands that are going to spawn. And just keep maging these totems down. Look at that, parasites went out, you can see it hit me. You can see the text box, I've been affected by a parasite. Sip the sand fuse serum, or else you'll take a whole bunch of damage from that parasite when it comes out. And it does not feel good, it is insane. Look at that, eight damage that time when the parasite came out. Ignore the parasites when sleepwalkers come out. Sleepwalkers take precedent over the parasites. Sleepwalkers are basically down, let's go kill these parasites real quick. Magic attack right there. You can hear the whooshing magic sound, the ticking sound. Bam. Back to uh, protect from range. Gotta keep your prayer up too. Make sure you're staying on top of your prayer potion. So on the phase three right here, he'll do a dashing effect. That dash will hurt if you're in front of it. You're gonna make sure that you're clicked off of him. And just run away. You don't want to get hit by that dash. Hands, black circles, move away from him. Click back on the boss and start fighting. Easy as that. Clicking, protect from range. Whooshing, boom, that's magic. Look at this. Easy fight, guys. This is an easy fight right here. Easy piece. Magic again. Just keeps doing the magic. Melee attack, that's another easy one. On the backside of him. Don't even have to worry about the melee attacks as long as you have a tank. You can't see my tank right now. He's being hidden through Entity Hider. 
Those mushrooms that I just got pulled into will turn off your run energy. They're not the biggest deal in the world. You don't really have to worry about them too much. Hands, watch out for the black circles. Don't walk under him either. Ticking, protect from range. He's about to go into his next phase. That's protect from magic. There we go. Final phase. Here we go. Just hit the totems and he's dead now. So you see he teleported. He's going to dash. Watch out for the circles. Here we go. Totems are going down. Nice and easy. This fight is a lot harder when you have to talk and do it and coach people through. I'm not going to lie. It was a little difficult for me on that one, guys. And boom, though. He is down. I didn't end up dying. Didn't make a fool of myself. First tried it. That one took how long was it? It was a five-minute fight. Not too bad. Personal best was three minutes, 43 seconds. And we got two Snapdragons for a 63k loot. Not bad, not bad, guys. And that is all there is to it for Nightmare. It is as easy as that. And then you can use your version, or you can use your Drakken's Medallion to teleport back to version Haza when the fight's over. And look, you are right back at the bank. Good to go. Put away your, your loot you got, re-grab your supplies, and run back out there. And that is all there is to Nightmare. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I'm W, and game on, my friends. I'll see you next time.